The ideas for leaving began while thinking of how to use wheel thrown form so it would not look wheel thrown in the end. The final sculpture was going to be a hybrid of materials and techniques, but I wanted it to look effortless and natural. The discs that eventually become the leaf forms start out as roughly thrown discs of heavily grogged stoneware. The grog in the clay is an additive that will reinforce the clay during the entire firing process. However, it makes the clay more difficult to throw since the grog is non-plastic. To transform the thrown discs into leaf shapes requires waiting about 24 hours to let the clay partially dry and stiffen into a condition known as leather hard. At this point, the various discs, which weigh anywhere from 15 to 25 pounds each, could be lifted and stretched with minimal damage. At the end of the stretching, a hole was pushed into the clay with a wooden dowel rod to make a mount for the steel rods to come. Wood-fired kilns are common across many cultures and centuries. Even in the face of rapidly developing technologies like computer-programmed kilns, they are enjoying a revival due to their unusual and often unpredictable results. Colors and glaze surfaces developed from the flying ash of the burning wood and different types of wood give different results. It is a labor-intensive process with firings lasting as long as five days or more. Tom and Jeff Hunsaker of Thorntown, Indiana graciously allowed me to fire my leaf discs in their 900 cubic foot kiln. Three feet away and they realized that their arm is you know, yeah, really hot so they just launched the, yeah, the wood and, they the get it. <laughs> and somebody actually did that and took out a big pot in the first on the floor you know, when we were down there, just launched it in. Well what amazes me is how quickly the wood burst in the flame. Yeah. I mean, While the leaves were being fired and then cooled, I had to prepare the armature made of off-the-shelf steel rebar. My friend Steve Titolo welded the assembly of bent steel rods into a strong network of stems for the fired leaves. We laid out the leaves on the studio floor to make sure the welded stems had the proper curves. We numbered all the components, then transported them to Armstrong Hall at Purdue. Once on site, we used epoxy mortar to finalize the assembly. To install the wall sculpture over the stairwell, a scaffold needed to be erected. With the help of several friends, we hoisted the 150-pound form over the railings and mounted the sculpture onto three well-anchored hooks. After some adjustments, 
We could stand back and enjoy the lightweight leaf that had blown against the stairwell wall of the Dean's Suite in Armstrong Hall.